Welcome to another deep dive. And today, um, we're tackling a question that I find really, really fascinating. Hmm. Can ancient wisdom actually hold the key to curing modern diseases? Ooh, I like that. Yeah, we're going to be looking specifically at traditional Chinese medicine. TCM. Yeah, TCM. And its approach to diabetes. Right. A condition that you know affects millions globally. Millions and millions. Um, and in preparing for this deep dive, I was really struck by just how differently Western medicine and TCM view diabetes. Yeah. Western medicine, it's all about, you know, insulin, blood sugar control. Right. But TCM sees it as this imbalance of heat and moisture in the body. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fascinating, isn't it? Like just how, you know, these different cultural and historical contexts shape our understanding of health and disease. Absolutely. And our main source today is a lecture from a renowned TCM practitioner who's had incredible success treating diabetic patients. Wow. Even those with like severe complications. That's incredible. And they make a pretty bold claim right off the bat. They believe that type 1 diabetes, as it's understood in Western medicine, isn't something that occurs naturally. Okay. They attribute it to things like vaccines and certain medications. Wow. That's definitely a controversial viewpoint. And it's important for us to be upfront about that. We're presenting this information as it was shared by the practitioner, but we're not endorsing this particular view. What's interesting, though, is how this practitioner's clinical experience seems to support their conviction. They've seen patients who develop type 1 diabetes after vaccinations or starting specific medications, which has led them to believe that the human body in its natural state wouldn't develop this type of diabetes. It really makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, so let's dive into how TCM actually understands diabetes. They call it Zhao Ke. Zhao Ke. And it goes beyond just looking at blood sugar levels. Right. It's about a much broader pattern of disharmony in the body. One of the key principles they talk about is this idea of three yang accumulation. Three yang accumulation. Yes. Essentially, excess heat in the stomach and large intestine throws everything off balance. And that's what leads to Shao Kei. So how does that heat actually translate into what we know as diabetes? Well, the practitioner uses a really interesting analogy to explain this. Imagine dissolving sugar in water. If you have a smaller amount of water, the concentration of sugar is going to be higher, right. right? In the same way, TCM sees a body that's lacking in fluids as having higher blood sugar levels. So instead of just focusing on lowering blood sugar, like in Western medicine, TCM tries to restore balance by replenishing those fluids and clearing out the excess heat. That makes a lot of sense. And this practitioner has some really fascinating insights into the different types of Xiao Kei, which I have to admit I had never heard of before. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, they break it down into three categories. Upper Xiao Kei, okay. Middle Xiao Kei, and Lower Xiao Kei, okay. each with its own unique set of symptoms and treatment approaches. Okay, let's unpack those categories. What's the difference between them? Upper Xiao Kei is all about excessive thirst. It's that feeling of constantly needing to drink water. Middle Xiao Kei is characterized by excessive hunger. These are the folks who are always feeling ravenous no matter how much they eat. Oh, wow. And then there's Lower Xiao Kei, which focuses on issues like sexual dysfunction. So how does TCM actually treat these different types of Xiao Kei? Do they have specific remedies for each category? They do. For upper Xiao Kei, which remember is about excessive thirst, they might use a formula called Renchen Bai Hu Tang. This formula is designed to clear heat and replenish fluids, addressing that underlying imbalance. Now for middle Xiao Kei, the practitioner has actually developed their own custom formula. Wow. This formula targets heat in both the stomach and large intestine, which they believe is the root cause of excessive hunger. And then for lower Xiao Kei, they often use a formula called Shen Qi Wan. This one's all about addressing kitty function and improving sexual health. Wow, it's amazing how they have such specific remedies tailored to each individual presentation. Right. It really speaks to the individualized approach of TCM. But are herbal formulas the only way they treat diabetes? Absolutely not. While these formulas are powerful tools, the practitioner really emphasizes that true healing comes from a holistic approach, and that includes lifestyle changes. Okay, so what kind of lifestyle changes do they recommend? Things like avoiding late night snacks, reducing sugar intake, and increasing physical activity. Pretty simple stuff, right? But they really believe that these small changes can have a big impact on overall health and well-being. I think that resonates with a lot of people. We often look for complex solutions when the answer might be right in front of us in the everyday choices we make. Exactly. Now, one thing that really struck me about this practitioner's lecture was their incredible success treating patients with severe diabetic complications. 
We're talking about things like foot ulcers and gangrene, conditions that Western medicine often struggles to manage effectively. Yeah, they even talked about cases where they were able to avoid amputation through TCM treatments, which is pretty remarkable. Mm, it is. And it really makes you wonder if there's something to this ancient wisdom that we're overlooking in our modern approach to healthcare. This is where it gets really thought provoking mm -hmm. because the practitioner doesn't just focus on the physical aspects of diabetes. Mm -hmm. They connect it to our modern lifestyle and habits in a way that's really eye opening. Right. They talk about how things like processed foods, sedentary lifestyles and having constant access to food are all contributing to this epidemic of diabetes. Right. Even conveniences like cars and air conditioning play a role because they lead to less physical activity and weaker circulation. It's like we've created this environment where it's almost too easy to fall out of balance. Mm. Our ancestors had to work much harder for everything and their bodies were constantly challenged in a way that ours just aren't anymore. It's a really interesting perspective, isn't it? And it makes you wonder if rediscovering some of that ancient wisdom might be the key to solving some of our modern health problems. Definitely. Now, the next part, we're going to delve deeper into this practitioner's controversial perspective on type 1 diabetes and how it relates to modern medical practices. You won't want to miss this. Welcome back. You know, as we delve deeper into this practitioner's perspective on type 1 diabetes, it's important to remember that they're coming from a very different place than conventional Western medicine. Right. And as we mentioned before, their viewpoint is definitely controversial. They're essentially arguing that type 1 diabetes isn't a natural condition, but rather a result of medical interventions what they call iatrogenic diabetes. Exactly. And they back this up with observations from their practice. They've seen cases where patients developed type 1 diabetes after receiving vaccinations or taking certain medications. It's like the body's own immune system goes haywire and starts attacking the pancreas, preventing it from producing insulin. That's how they understand it. They describe it as the immune system getting confused and turning against itself after being exposed to these external agents. And this leads to a situation where the pancreas is essentially damaged, making it much more challenging to treat type 1 diabetes from a TCM perspective. So if the pancreas is damaged, does that mean it's impossible to restore its function using TCM? Well, the practitioner admits that it's incredibly difficult. They've found that trying to get these patients off insulin is extremely challenging because the pancreas just isn't working the way it should. That makes sense. It's like trying to fix a broken engine. You might be able to patch it up, but it's never going to run quite the same. It's a good analogy, and this really highlights the contrast between how they approach type 1 diabetes versus type 2 diabetes. They see type 2 as a more treatable condition within the TCM framework because it's not about a damaged organ, but rather an imbalance in the system as a whole. Right, and that goes back to the analogy we talked about earlier, the one about sugar dissolving in water. Exactly. Remember, in type 2 diabetes, TCM sees the body as that glass with too little water resulting in a higher concentration of sugar. So the focus is on replenishing those fluids and clearing out the excess heat, ultimately restoring balance to the entire system. It's a completely different way of thinking about it compared to the Western medical model, which is primarily focused on lowering blood sugar levels. And that's where the practitioner gets really critical of Western medicine's approach. They compare it to a magic trick where you make something disappear, but it's still there, just hidden. In the same way, they argue that lowering blood sugar with medication doesn't address the underlying issue. The excess sugar is still present in the body. It's just been masked. So where did that excess sugar go if it's not being properly metabolized? Well, the practitioner points out that it can accumulate in other parts of the body, particularly the extremities like the feet. And that's why diabetic patients often experience foot problems. It's like the sugar is settling there, causing damage and complications. They actually brought up a pretty sobering example to illustrate this point. They talked about former Taiwanese President Chan King Kuo, who died from complications related to diabetic foot ulcers. It really highlights the limitations of just focusing on managing blood sugar levels without addressing the root cause of the problem. Absolutely. It's a stark reminder that simply lowering blood sugar levels might not be enough to achieve true healing. Now, you mentioned earlier that this practitioner connects diabetes to modern lifestyle habits. Let's dive into that a bit more. What are some of the things they see as contributing to this epidemic? Well, they paint a pretty clear picture of how our modern conveniences, while making life easier in many ways, are actually detrimental to our health. They talk about how we drive everywhere, rely on air conditioning, and have constant access to processed foods, all things that disrupt our body's natural equilibrium. And they specifically call out late night snacking as a major culprit in developing diabetes. Mm -hmm. Why is that? 
They explain that when you eat late at night and then go to sleep soon after, the food just sits in your stomach and doesn't digest properly. This leads to a buildup of heat and eventually throws off your blood sugar balance. It's like giving your body a heavy workload right when it's trying to wind down or repair itself. And they believe that this habit can actually be passed down through generations, creating what appears to be familial diabetes. But they're not talking about genetics here, but rather learned behaviors. Right. It's not that you're genetically predisposed to diabetes, but rather you've adopted the same unhealthy habits as your parents or grandparents. I think that's a really powerful point because it shifts the focus from something you can't control to something you can your lifestyle choices. Absolutely. And this practitioner sees that shift as crucial for preventing and managing diabetes. Okay. So we've covered a lot of ground in this point. Mm -hmm. We've explored the practitioner's controversial perspective on type 1 diabetes, their critique of Western medicine's approach, and their insights into how modern lifestyle habits contribute to this epidemic. What's next? Well, in the final part, we're going to shift gears and explore the practitioner's specific advice for preventing and managing diabetes from a TCM perspective. They offer some really practical tips that go beyond just medication and blood sugar monitoring. Sounds intriguing. Can't wait to hear what they have to say. <laughs> Welcome back. It's amazing how much we've already unpacked yeah. you know, when it comes to TCM diabetes. So let's get into the practical stuff now. What kind of advice does this practitioner offer for actually preventing and managing this condition? Is it all about acupuncture and herbs? Or are there things we can do like in our everyday lives to make a difference? Well, they do talk about, you know, specific herbs and formulas, but they really emphasize that TCM isn't just about quick fixes. It's about understanding the root cause of the imbalance and addressing it through a combination of treatments and lifestyle changes. Okay, so what are some of those lifestyle recommendations? A lot of it echoes what we've already talked about, like avoiding those late night snacks, cutting back on refined sugars and processed foods, and opting for whole grains and natural sweeteners. You know, that late night snacking thing really stood out to me. They seem to be pretty adamant about that one. Oh, they are, yeah. They believe it disrupts the digestive process leading to that buildup of heat in the stomach that we talked about earlier. It's all about giving your body a chance to rest and repair overnight instead of bombarding it with food that it can't process efficiently. And they suggest incorporating more movement into our daily routines, even if it's just simple things like walking or taking the stairs. Exactly. It's not about becoming a marathon runner overnight, but just finding ways to be more active throughout the day. They actually had a really interesting observation about their patients in the U.S. They notice that many of them have weakened toe strength because they rarely walk barefoot or engage in activities that require them to use their feet actively. It's funny how something so simple can have such a profound impact on our overall health. Yeah, they compared it to the strong, flexible toes of indigenous people who walk barefoot regularly. It really highlights how our modern lifestyle, with all its comforts and conveniences, has led to subtle but significant changes in our bodies. You know, it's easy to get caught up in like the latest diet fads or fitness trends, but this reminds us that sometimes the simplest solutions are the most effective. Absolutely. And this practitioner really drives that point home. They believe that true healing comes from reconnecting with our bodies, listening to what they need, and making choices that support their natural balance. And that's where the personalized approach of TCM really shines right. It's not about one-size-fits-all solutions. Exactly. The practitioner used the analogy of a tailor crafting a custom suit. Just like each person needs a suit that fits their unique measurements, each patient needs a treatment plan tailored to their specific imbalances and needs. They don't believe in, like, cookie-cutter approaches. It's fascinating how TCM weaves together ancient wisdom and modern understanding to create this incredibly personalized system of healthcare. It is, and it challenges us to think differently about health and disease, to move beyond just managing symptoms and really address the root cause of the problem. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what are some of the key takeaways for our listeners? Well, I think this episode has given us a glimpse into a completely different way of understanding and approaching diabetes. While Western medicine excels in acute care and managing symptoms, TCM offers this holistic perspective that emphasizes balance and prevention. It's not about choosing one over the other, but rather recognizing that there are multiple ways of knowing and healing. 
and sometimes ancient wisdom like TCM can offer valuable insights for modern-day health problems. Absolutely. This deep dive has been filled with controversial claims, thought-provoking analogies, and practical advice. But most importantly, I hope it sparked a sense of curiosity in our listeners. Yes, curiosity about alternative approaches to health and well-being, about the interconnectedness of our bodies and our lifestyles, and about the power of ancient wisdom to inform our modern lives. And who knows, maybe it's even inspired some of you to explore the world of TCM and see what insights it might hold for you. That's it for our deep dive into TCM and diabetes. We encourage you to keep learning, keep questioning, and keep exploring the vast world of knowledge that's out there.